So you've decided you want to upgrade to Clipper, but how do you do it? And where do you even start? This video is sponsored by PCBWay. This is not gonna be a jargon-filled deep dive on exactly what button to press and when, but more of an overview of all of the stages that you're gonna to need to go through so that you can see how it all works and what you're going to have to buy and do to make your 3D printer work with Clipper. I do have those in-depth videos when you're ready for them though. I made a whole video giving my opinion on why you might want Clipper, which you can watch by clicking up here, so I won't cover any of that again. No, this video is all about the how, not the why. Rather than being just firmware that runs on your 3D printer, Clipper is more like software that runs on a separate device that connects to your 3D printer and takes over control of it. This means that the setup can be a little bit more complicated than some other firmware options, which puts a lot of people off. Hopefully though, once you've watched this video, things should be a little bit clearer. As you're watching a video about how to upgrade a 3D printer to Clipper firmware, I'm going to assume that you already have a 3D printer. What you'll also then need is some kind of device that can run a Linux operating system. If, like I would have done a couple of years ago, you've just cringed because you have no idea what Linux is and how it works, don't panic. Like I say, a couple of years ago, neither did I, but all you really need to know at this stage is that it's an alternative operating system to something like Windows, and it runs on lots of different devices like smartphones and single board computers like Raspberry Pis. Once you have a device that can run on Linux, which could even be an old laptop if you have one, you then go through a relatively simple process of installing the Linux operating system and then installing the Clipper software itself. If you want to simplify things further, then you can just buy a ready-made Clipper device like Creality Sonic Pad, which already has the operating system and Clipper installed. You will pay a bit more for the easier setup, and understandably, Creality's version does come optimized for use with Creality machines, even though you can use other 3D printers with it. From here on, your Clipper device will need to be permanently connected to your 3D printer so that it can control all of its movements and actions. To get your 3D printer to listen to what the Clipper device is telling it to do, you also need to flash some firmware to your 3D printer's control board. This is usually pretty easy, but the process can be a little bit different depending on the 3D printer, or more specifically, the 3D printer's control board. Which is why I always advise learning how to do this bit before you spend any money on hardware. I have to say, even though it seems like a lot of different stages, each one on its own is actually pretty simple. And I have videos of how to do all of it on my channel, so hit subscribe if you want to be able to find my videos again easily. Once you have a Clipper-enabled device and Clipper firmware on your 3D printer, the only thing left to do is to tell your Clipper device all about your 3D printer so that it knows how to talk to it. Now, if you think that all of this looks really complicated, but you still need a way to produce 3D printed parts quicker, why not consider using PCBWay? PCBWay are well known for their PCB prototype and manufacture, but did you know that's not all they do? PCBWay now also have extensive 3D printing, CNC machining, and laser cutting options to help you speed up your manufacturing output without investing in new machines or upgrading old ones. Check out the links in the description for their full capabilities. All of the basic information that your Clipper device needs to be able to control your 3D printer is kept in configuration files, which are easy to read text files. These configuration files are pretty key to a smooth Clipper experience. And thankfully, you can usually find one ready to go for your 3D printer or control board online. If you do have a modified printer or even one that's a little bit more obscure, then you may need to modify some of this configuration yourself. This does add some complexity, and if you're completely new, then you may find this a bridge too far. As I say, none of it on its own is particularly difficult, but it can be very frustrating when there's just one key bit of information that you don't know and can't find the answer to. But that's why I'm here. I do my best to make video guides to try and help you through all of those wanting to bang your head against the wall moments. And hopefully my Clipper series answers most, if not all, of the questions you might have. Once you have a configuration file for your Clipper control printer, you're on the home straight. After running through a few checks, you'll be ready to print again, but now with much higher potential speeds. There are then just a few calibration tests you can do to fine tune things, and you will want to change your slicer settings to take advantage of what your printer can now do. But you can generally do these as and when you feel the need to. Again, make sure you check out the videos in my Clipper series if you decide that your 3D printer deserves a Clipper overhaul. I go into much more detail of each and every step, so hopefully you'll find all the information you need in one place. Click over here 
to get started on your Clipper journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.